We're back. Can you believe it? I can, because we're back, and guess what month it is. If you guessed May, you'd be wrong, because that's thinking small. Guys, it's Mermaid. What's Mermaid, you ask? Well, it's really not all that complicated to explain. Basically, Mermaid is a social media trend where artists draw and share different mermaid-themed artwork. Some people use prompt lists, others just do a couple of pieces and call it a month, and some people make up their own prompt list, do a drawing a day, write lore about characters in the drawing, record audio of the lore, question the amount of work they're putting into this thing and whether it's actually worth it, and then make a video about it. Now, I can't imagine someone doing something as crazy as that. No, wait. No, I can. It's me. I'm doing that. I had so much fun with Apoctober and D&D December, coming up with these characters and kind of improving the story along with them as I go, that I decided to do it again with Mermaid. So, in keeping with the tradition of these past daily prompt challenges, I'll be doing a series of videos explaining my thought process behind these characters and the little bit of lore that I wrote for each one. I'm gonna keep this introduction brief because it's actually a lot to go through. I mean, seven designs for seven days. No, the first week, you get it. Okay, let's dive in. <laughs> get it. We're going to get a dive in. Okay. So I set up this prompt list with a kind of overarching theme that I wanted each of the prompts to reflect in some way. Mariana Trench. Basically, the deepest part of the ocean. Now, as far as we know, there's very little that actually lives down there. It's mostly worms and microscopic organisms, although a scientist once reported seeing a kind of flatfish during one of the few dives to the very bottom of Challenger Deep. Since we're going fictional anyway, I just decided I wanted to capture the essence of the deep sea, and there are a lot of creepy beasties living in the darkness. There are a few that most people are familiar with, but I decided to go with one that I had never heard of before this challenge, the tube-eyed fish. I thought that the creepiest thing I could imagine coming out of pitch black water would be a pair of giant glowing green eyes, and this long misshapen jaw of the fish was also incredibly creepy. It was in this piece that I decided I wanted each of these prompts to be more than just a flat character illustration. I wanted to practice a little bit with atmosphere, scenery, and lighting. Which works well in a setting with no light, no atmosphere, and very minimal scenery. Having the creature itself be the light source was a lot of fun though, and I used it again in the next piece that you'll see. Now, here's the first installment of the lore series I've written for these designs. Remember, this is all first draft, off the top of my head kind of stuff, but maybe I'll turn it into a fully fleshed out story at some point. It was thanks to these animals that we were able to discover the cave mouth in the center basin of Challenger Deep. Hundreds of them drifted through the water, circling the massive opening in the rocks. Ranging in size from 4 to 13 feet in length, the creatures ignore our bathyscape. They appear to be obsessed with the cave, but none were seen ever entering or exiting. It was as if something just inside the gaping maw of that black pit was warding them off. I kept these prompts very vague so that people could interpret them in all sorts of different ways. I wasn't sure where I was going to take the idea of stone at first, but my first idea was a stone crab, a species of crustacean known for its thick, robust body and powerful claws. I got to thinking about some large bodyguard crab man standing in a doorway, and I realized that I had only made it one day without drawing a mermaid that wouldn't have a fishtail as her lower half. But I couldn't turn away from the idea at this point, so I went full steam ahead with my giant stone crab mermaid. The burden of selling the idea of size was going to have to fall to either the composition or the atmosphere, since there weren't going to be any other characters in the shot. In the end though, I added a few fish circling the light emanating from the character's head, as I thought this helped drive the point home. This was another one where the light source came from the character, but since I wanted it to feel more far away from the viewer, I gave it a lot less contrast. This is how atmosphere helped me contribute to the scale of the character. And here's the lore. After the swarm of lurkers suddenly turned violent, we were forced to go deeper into the mouth of the unmapped cave. The lurkers followed us with a feverish determination until we reached a series of lights within the cave's entrance. As if they hit some sort of invisible wall, the creatures retreated, and we passed through massive stone carvings emanating some eerie green light. 
One of our engineers swore that she saw the statue move, following us with its empty, sunken stone face. We need to find a way to surface soon, unless we all start to hallucinate. Now, of course, the obvious choice for inspiration with Pinsir would be a crab, but I had just shot my wad on a crab for the last prompt, and while I knew that it would not be the last crab that I draw, I figured I should at least give it a few more days before my next one. Besides, crab was just too obvious for Pinsir. I wanted something that felt like it would very delicately strip ribbons of flesh off of a sunken corpse. I, I don't know, it was just the image that came into my mind. In my head, I imagined sea spiders with tiny claws on the ends of all of their legs, but that's not actually what they look like in real life, so I fudged it a little bit. I mean, this is fantasy, you know, no rules. This was definitely the creepiest design I did all week, but I was really, really happy with it, especially with how I did the lighting. One big spotlight cast by a diving crew as if catching the creature in some heinous act. This was the lore that I wrote for it. We crept slowly through the winding passages of the undersea cave. Half the crew wanted to turn around and return to the surface, while the other half insisted that we press forward, out of fear that the lurkers outside the caves had been pursuing us. The darkness spanned on for what seemed like forever, and with our navigation system malfunctioning, we were forced to grope our way through the black water using only sight. More than once, our lights revealed creatures slowly crawling along the walls of the tunnel many legs, all ending in sharp, nimble claws, seemed to click in anticipation as we floated by. Some were seen picking at corpses, of what none of us could say. But I don't think we were the first people to have gotten lost in this ancient labyrinth. At this point, I was pretty invested in the narrative I was creating with each of these characters, and I began thinking about a story where a character's understanding of science is challenged by impossible things occurring on a scientific expedition to the bottom of the ocean. A sort of conflict between faith in what you know to be true versus what you see before you. I kept thinking about it after reading that story about the real scientists who saw a fish at the bottom of Challenger Deep, though now it's believed they were mistaken and that no vertebrate could ever exist under those conditions. Anyway, it was because of this story that I decided I wanted my lore to be more metaphorical than literal. A promise of discovery that defies all logic and reason. And because I had established the narrative with a crew of characters rather than just one, I wanted something that would be a lore for several different people with different desires. For a group of scientists trapped at the bottom of the ocean, I thought that a breakthrough discovery, light, the promise of returning to the surface, and a human voice would be the most persuasive lore. Not that it's a trap. It can't be, right? Anyway, here's the lore for Day 4's prompt. We had all but completely lost track of time. It felt like we had been wandering those undersea tunnels for days. And fuel, food, and uh, morale were all at a dangerous low. There was a rumor that a small portion of our crew were, were planning on sabotaging the diesel tank and flooding the cabin with fumes so, so that our death may be peaceful. But then we, we saw that light, light filtering down from the surface. <laughs> How could this be possible? We had, we had had to have been at least six miles below the surface, could those, could those caves had been slowly leading us upwards? It's not possible, right? There was a figure, wavering like a mirage in the dappled light. Had I not seen the other things I had in the cave, I would have been convinced that it was all a hallucination. But. What I thought I knew about science, about our world, all of these facts have turned to faith. 
faith that has been shaken. <clears throat> and uh, now, I have no choice but to follow this light and follow her voice. Surely the crew will understand. After designing a rather traditional looking mermaid on day 4, I wanted to get a little bit more crazy with day 5. But not too crazy, because at this point in the story the crew have arrived in safe waters, and I wanted this character to reflect this newfound sense of security, but still be a little ominous. I kind of thought literally with the prompt shell, but I did restrain from drawing another crab. At first I thought just a turtle, but that seemed a little underdeveloped. I mean, there are so many cool shells that you can find in the ocean, I felt like it needed to include at least another iconic one. She ended up kind of being a collage of miscellaneous sea creatures, but I was very happy with her. I felt like it was an original idea that hit the sweet spot between comforting and unnerving. Not that it's a trap, but the crew is suspicious. Some of them, anyway. Here, this is the lore. Defying all principles of known science, the captain followed this mirage-like creature that called herself Marioness into a shallow cove. Sunlight filtered down from above, yet I could swear we were no closer to the surface than when we first entered the caves. Another creature greeted us there in the shallow, her voice echoing through the cabins of our vessel, comprehensive at once by all members of the I'm not sure what to believe anymore. She's asked us to leave behind the bathyscape and follow her, swimming. The magic of our kingdom will protect you. Breathe deep the clear waters around. She said, I... We'll have to discuss this as a crew and decide whether we're ready to completely abandon the world of logic and science we've dedicated our lives to in the name of discovery. Okay, I made it four days without drawing another crab, but bubbles? I mean, come on, how could you not think of crab? Well, I guess I also think of that yellow tang from Finding Nemo. <laughs> That would have been pretty funny. But no, I wanted to introduce some kind of antagonistic force with this character. Something existing in the shallows, but living in darkness. A reminder to some of the crew that perhaps this new sanctuary that they've discovered isn't quite what they think it is, or at least that it's temporary. But unlike the stone crab, I wanted this mermaid to feel very small, like she could hide in any crack or crevice she needed to to spy on you. I also used the bubbles to give her kind of a rabbit feel, literally foaming at the mouth. But at the same time, I didn't want her to feel like an immediate threat. She's not the danger, just a warning. But maybe don't leave your toes exposed for too long. This was the lore that I wrote for her. The crew has been divided. Three members have stayed aboard the Bathyscape, while the remaining six of us have left the ship through the airlock. To our amazement and disbelief, there was no change in pressure, no change in temperature, we didn't even feel wet. It was as if we had stepped into a brightly lit parlor of sand and stone, and we hung there suspended in the water, and I took the first breath. I couldn't quite describe what sensation came over me. I took water in through my lungs and breathed air out of my mouth. It was like I was in a dream, but no, I am fully awake. But the rest of the crew followed me after Judakna, and we swam towards this promised paradise. But out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something, always just behind us, scuttling in and out of the rocks. It was like the darkness from the caves was being drawn behind it like a long cloak, slowly creeping after us with the creature as its guide. I quickened my pace into the sunlight.
Okay, so I took a break from the narrative on this one. This character isn't part of the same universe the other creatures are from this week, but I just, <laughs> I wanted to draw a hip-hop dolphin mermaid. <laughs> we came up with the idea in a stream as a Gwen Stefani song came on while I was drawing. And at first I was gonna draw a Gwen Stefani mermaid, but I, I don't know, I thought boombox because sonar and well, you can just see where it went. <laughs> I don't have lore for Bottoms Up, Bottlenose, the undersea DJ, but maybe you guys can come up with a story for her. I, I love her, honestly, she might be my favorite of this whole week. So that's it for the first week of Mermaid. Let me know which one of my seven mermaids was your favorite from this week. And before we end today's video, I want to share some of my favorite mermaids that you guys have done in this past week. If you want to see your mermaid in this next video, be sure to tag your illustrations on Instagram with the hashtag Mariana Mermaid. Or if you don't use Instagram, share them in the Subjectively Fan Art channel of our Discord. The link is down in the description. I can't wait to see more of your guys' awesome work. Enjoy the next week of Mermaid, and I will see you all in the next video.